Here we go. We are, again, this is the last section that's going to be split into two notes days and two homework days, and then we'll review, and then we'll take your test on this chapter. But before we get into the solving equations using the distributive property, I want to refresh the distributive property and the box method. Keep in mind, I typically use the box method when I have problems that are bigger, meaning two terms times two terms, because it's a great way to organize. It's a way to stop you from missing important pieces of information that can be lost if you try to distribute. But if you are good at the distributive property, maybe you can get, maybe you can do the distributive property here. You just have to double distribute on that problem. I think the box method is the easier way to do it. So when I set up the box, remember the first one goes down the side, the second one goes across the top, and then I just multiply the little problems together. Six times two is 12, x times x is x squared. Six times five is 30, and then I have one x there. Negative 11 times 2 is negative 22, and I put the x at the end because I had a 2x. And then negative 11 times 5, negative 55. So all I'm doing is little multiplication problems. I look for like terms. Got to figure out what 30x plus negative 22x is. 30x plus negative 22x is 8x. X. If you don't believe me, plug it in your calculator. 30 plus negative 22. And then when I write this out, I write all of the pieces because I'm adding these all together. So it's 12x squared plus the combination of these two was positive 8x plus negative 55, which I write as minus 55. And so then I have my simplified form. The box method is, like I said, very helpful for organizing. However, if I only have a monomial times a binomial or trinomial, sometimes it's quicker and easier just to distribute. And you've been doing the distributive property for a while. So this is negative 2 times 15 is negative 30x squared, x times x. And negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. And then there was an x by the 2, so I bring it down. So I'm done with that one. I didn't have to create the box. The distributive property came out pretty nice for those. Do however you need to do. But like I said, this is my recommendation. For the bigger ones, make a box. For the smaller ones, just distribute. So let's get into solving with the distributive property. So we're going to be doing some solving meaning I either have to distribute or in the case of problem number four, I may have to do the box method to clean it up before I can solve. So for number three, because it's just those two terms, I'm going to distribute. So 2y minus 4 equals 6. To solve, I'm going to add 4 on both sides. and divide by 2 on both sides. Just normal solving, I just had to do the distributive property first. Trev, are you with me? Yeah. I feel like you're not. Okay. Distributive property first and then do normal solving. You guys have solved a lot, I know you have. Brady, you're with me? Yeah. Okay. So, um, again, I have those parentheses there that I need to take care of. Because it's that double parentheses, I'm going to off to the side do the box method, and then I'll come back and put the problem back together. So this is just me simplifying off to the side so that I can actually bring it back together and solve. When I bring it back together, this 5x squared plus 43 is still going to be there. But now I need to do this cleanup stuff. So in the box method, I do 5x squared plus 6x. That's x times 6. Negative 1 times 5x minus 5x. And then minus 6. I'm multiplying to get these inside ones. And then I look for like terms. I have them right here. So 
I usually just kind of think of what those are. Negative 5 plus 6 is positive 1x. So when I write this out, I have 5x squared plus x, that's 1x, plus negative 6, which is minus 6. Now I have my equation. So it turns out right now that when we're working on these problems, you're always going to have the x squared term be the same on both sides. That's not the way it is always. That's the way it is for these problems. And a way for me to clean that up quickly is if I have the same thing on both sides, I can just cancel them out. So Brady, you got that? If I have the same thing on both sides, I can just cancel them out. Put your phone down. In fact, I need you to put your phone away. Trev, you too. I have the same thing on both sides. This only works if it's the same thing on both sides. And by both sides, I mean both sides of the equal sign. If they're on the same side, it doesn't work that way. I have to have one on the left-hand side of the equal sign, one on the right-hand side of the equal sign in order for me to cancel them out, and they have to look identical. Once I'm there, I can bring everything else down. 43 equals x minus 6, and then I can solve this like normal. And there's my final answer. So a little bit more work. In fact, when we look at problem number five, it's going to be even more work. Because I'm going to have two box methods that I have to do. So let's get set up for number five. I like to, when I'm working through these, like um, pick different colors for each one. So for me, just so it stands out, so that first one I'm going to do in this pink, I'm going to make my box method for that. X plus 3, X plus 4. So I multiply everything, not add, multiply. X times X is X squared. X times 4 is 4X. Four 3 times X is 3X. Three, 3 times 4 is 12. When I add these two guys together, I get 7x, 3x plus 4x, that's this combination here. And so now when I write this, it's x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals, now I'll take my other color and go to the other side. Another 2 by 2, x plus 1 x plus 2, x times x is x squared, x times 2 is 2x, 1x, 1 times x, and 1 times 2 is 2. Combine those like terms, that's going to give me 3x for those two. So this one writes down as x squared plus 3x plus 2. Again, it turns out that when we're working on these, our squared terms are going to be identical. Not always going to be the case, and in the future we're going to work with some that it's not. Trev, I asked you to put that away, right? Why is it still out? Put it away. Thank you x times x, I didn't say throw it on the floor. The x squared, x squared, each side of the equal sign, I'm left with 7x plus 12 equals 3x plus 2. And now I have to solve. It's been a while since we've done these where I have variables on both sides. I have my choice. I need to get rid of one of the variables. I usually pick the smaller one. That's not the law, but I'll get rid of the 3x because it's smaller. That way I can avoid a negative number. Sometimes that technique isn't going to even work. Sometimes I'm not going to be able to do that because I'm going to end up uh, maybe removing everything from one side of the equation. It's going to cause a problem. But here it works, so then I'll continue to solve like normal. So I have 4x equals negative 10 because I got rid of the 12. 
and then this doesn't go in evenly and that's not a big deal I'll just reduce it or if you feel like it plug it in your calculator it really doesn't matter I usually just reduce it because I'm lazy and I notice that I can take two out of both of them so I'll leave it like that and it's okay to not have that full answer all right last up is one a problem where there's double distribute now notice these in five were pretty complicated they had those um, two terms times two terms in here I just have these single ones so I'm just going to do the quick way 2x plus 2 plus 3 equals and I'll distribute the other side 3x minus 3 so I'm just distributing I didn't need to set up a box method just distributing and then people think when so I'm at each side of the equal sign people think when I see these two and these three and I always work with the opposites I must have to subtract them but no they're on the same side of the equal sign so all I'm doing is combining like terms all I'm doing is simplifying that they're on the same side it's not like I'm moving it to the other side so this is 2x plus 5 equals 3x minus 3 I just added 2 plus 3. Now I'm solving. Now it's the solving part. So now I have to pick which one of these to get rid of. I choose the smaller one. It's actually 1x minus 3, but I don't need to write the 1 in front. And now I need to get rid of the stuff that's by the x. And so that 3 is the first thing I'm going to look at. And I get my final answer. Now for your virtual tomorrow, you will have to be, so, you'll solve some equations with distributive property in them. That'll be your virtual. So you're going to be using the distributive property. You will not have any with the box method on it. You'll just have distributed and you'll have four problems to work through. Okay. We don't have any homework tonight, so just make sure you're okay with this. Bring your notes home so you can look at it. You're going to be, like I said, doing problems like 3 and, and 6 on your virtual tomorrow. That's what you can expect. Problems like 3 and 6 where you distribute first and then solve.